What's up guys? It's your local realtor, Chloe Shook here, and this is my market update video for December of 2022. If you're looking to learn all about what's going on in the real estate market, not just from a national perspective, but from a local perspective as well, stay tuned. If this is your first time on my channel and you wanna learn all about the Southwest Florida real estate market, as well as all the different new construction communities, please make sure you subscribe to my channel. And if you are looking to purchase property in the Southwest Florida area, please make sure you reach out to me. You can call, text, email, message me on social media. I would love to hear from you. All right, so let's get into the national data. If you remember last month, we got some good news on the inflation reading, which caused rates to drop just slightly. The same thing happened again this month. We got more good news. So that's two months in a row now. So I would anticipate rates to continue to drop slowly as we head into 2023. Now, just to clarify, these minor fluctuations in rates are not due to anything that the Fed is doing to lower rates. These are just minor fluctuations based on different lenders' perspective on the market. Now, there are several different categories that make up the consumer price index, and one of them, of course, being housing, specifically rents. Now, from this chart, we can see that rents are trending down, but unfortunately, the data that's used in the CPI is about six months old. And you can see six months ago is about when our rents peaked. So eventually that data will catch up and I would expect to continue to see more good news on the inflation readings, especially in the housing category. Interest rates are currently in the low sixes. I am hoping to see them get to about the 5.5 mark in the beginning of 2023, as this seems to be the threshold of affordability for most Americans. If rates go back to the mid fives, I do predict that we will see a lot more market activity, certainly more than we are seeing right now. And this is because buyers are very sensitive to interest rates. So we can see this trend by looking at the number of mortgage applications each week with subtle changes in rates. Now, the reason I like to look at this data is because the sales data is going to be one to two months behind the number of mortgage applications. Now, it's not necessarily a one-for-one -one translation. There are, of course, some cash buyers in the market that account for additional sales. But in general, if someone's applying for a mortgage, they are in contract and they will likely close on their house one to two months after that. Now, mortgage applications are down about 40% from this time last year, which is to be expected. There are fewer buyers in the market because fewer people can afford the house that they want with rates being where they are at. However, we are up about 4% on a week over week basis. So this does give me hope that with subtle changes in interest rates, we are able to see some increase in market activity. In terms of our national inventory, we are down another two and a half percent from last week. Now, if you remember in last month's market update video, we talked about how this decrease in inventory wasn't necessarily because there are more buyers in the market, but rather because there are fewer listings. However, if we look at the number of new listings on a weekly basis, you'll see that this most recent week on the chart, we had an increase. However, there was a decrease in the inventory. This leads me to believe that more buyers are taking advantage of the slight decrease that we are seeing in interest rates. Now, in terms of home values nationally, some data I like to look at in order to anticipate where these values will be is the list price of new homes. Now, the reason I like to look at this is because listing prices are determined by agents who are local experts in their market. If they listed a home in the same neighborhood last week and sat at the open house and nobody came through, all of that data kind of goes into them deciding what the list price of that next listing will be. And because of this, the listing prices are a very good indicator of where home sale prices will be in the following months. Now, looking at this chart of list prices, we can see that the average national list price is compressing to about where home values were last year. It does appear that we're down about 10% from the height of sale prices in May of this year, which sounds scary, and that's what all the headlines are going to say. Really, you know, a 10% correction, what that actually looks like is that in you know early this year when rates were still very low you might be placing an offer on a house that's listed at five hundred thousand dollars and you have to bid five hundred fifty thousand dollars just to get that home 
Now, in today's market, that house might be listed for $500,000 and all you have to pay is $500,000 for it. So it's not necessarily that home values are decreasing, we are just seeing the effect of less activity in the market. In fact, I would call this more of a deceleration of home values rather than a decrease because year over year, we are still higher than we were last year. Now, heading into 2023, I'm hoping to see more increases in the number of listings, um, which will provide more options for buyers. And I'm also hoping that rates will be more in the mid five range. These are the signals that I will be looking for to determine how healthy our real estate market is going to be this year. Now for buyers in this market, it's more important than ever to have the right agent and the right team of lenders around you to help you make the right decision. There are certainly deals to be had not only on houses, but on the financing side of things as well. Many lenders are offering incentives to kind of combat the high interest rates that we're seeing. So it's really important to have someone that can help you make sense of that. Now for sellers, I know the common attitude is people want to stay put right now. You might be in a house where you have tons of equity and your interest rate is below 3%. Why would you want to move? Now, if you do have to move, you need more space or you are moving across the country, now might be a good time to keep the house that you have and rent it out and then use that equity and some of the cash flow to offset your borrowing costs on your next home. Again, same thing with buyers. It's important to have the right agent and team of professionals on your side to help you navigate some of those options. All right, now let's get into some of the local data for here in Southwest Florida. Now, there are some markets across the country that I would call boom markets, which are places that have seen an insane amount of growth that was pandemic related. Out of town investors, people moving for weather purposes, people that you know are coming from more expensive areas and they can afford to overpay for houses, that is what I would call a boom market, essentially a bubble within a bubble. Now, on the other hand, there are more steady markets that are growing for what I would call non-artificial reasons. Now, there are a couple red flags to look for that would indicate, in my opinion, that that specific market is what I would call a boom market. And one of those factors is that inventory right now would be higher than it was at the beginning of the pandemic. I'm talking March, 2020, we didn't know what was gonna happen. Now, if that's true, and we also see greater than 50% of properties on the market having a price decrease, I would call that more of a boom market. One boom market that many people are familiar with would be Boise, Idaho. Take a look at their inventory now versus what it was in May of 2020. That is a huge difference. It's much higher now than it was then. Boise also has about 61% of properties on the market having a price decrease. So now let's compare that to Naples. Now here in Naples, we have about half of the inventory that we had at the start of the pandemic. Now, we might not have a lot of market activity because things are just simply slowing down. Nobody's really buying or selling at the moment, but we are certainly not seeing a whole bunch of properties that are discounted. You can see here that only about 36% of properties in Naples have a price decrease at the moment. Now, since many people that are buying property in Naples, it's a second home for them, they're likely not gonna sell that property at a significant loss. However, we are seeing a lot of price decreases in the new construction segment of the market. Now this is because businesses like builders, they can't afford to just not sell their homes. They are much more price sensitive. So we are seeing a lot of builder incentives and price reductions to get people into these homes. So if you're looking to score a deal in Naples right now, I would say that new construction is probably your best bet. Plus, there's a lot more room for appreciation in some of these communities that aren't all the way developed yet, and your insurance costs are going to be much lower because a lot of these communities are not right on the water. That's what's going on in the national and local real estate market. If you are looking to purchase property in the Southwest Florida area, please make sure you reach out to me. You can call, text, email, message me on social media. I would love to hear from you.
If you'd like to get a notification next time I post a market update, be sure to subscribe to my channel and tap the notification bell. Thank you so much for watching this video and I hope to see you in the next one.